warfare is an ugly business and that's why leaders are looking for cleaner methods to try and solve conflict situations and that's where drones come in but not everyone's convinced. Amnesty International, for example, have been appalled how military drones are deployed and at the civilian casualties suffered as a result. I met with Amnesty International researcher Mustafa Qadri, who wrote a report on U.S. drone strikes in Pakistan and asked him if he was opposed to all types of drone use. We're not opposed to drones per se. The point is that, look, theoretically there might be all sorts of benefits, but let's deal with the facts. And the, facts is, the fact is that these drones are being used in a very secretive way. More countries are going to be using them, including in Europe. And in cases we've documented and others have documented, the wrong people are being killed, being killed in an unlawful way. And yet none of those people have received any kind of justice, any kind of compensation. We've got a risk of, if things continue, these kinds of killings, unlawful killings, will continue. That, that's the problem. And Amnesty are not alone, with the UN calling on drone nations to respect the right to life under the Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. The only problem therein is that these nations, such as the US, have been found to translate those international laws differently to others. The UN Special Rapporteur on Counterterrorism and Human Rights, Ben Emerson, says that approach needs to change. There are some kinds of weapons which, by their very nature, are indiscriminate, incapable of distinguishing between combatants in an armed conflict and civilians. Drones are not such a weapon, even weaponized drones. The critical um, area of pressure for this strategy is that it requires an entire rethink of international humanitarian law. The member states themselves need to analyze and publicly uh, explain their own understanding of the international law principles applicable. Like it or not, drone use is on the rise. It was announced in November 2013 that seven EU states will start building drones by 2020. But regardless of what the UN deems indiscriminate, MEP Barbara Lochbilla says no form of drone use, whether military or civilian, should be implemented by the EU. Well, for the civilian use of drones, it might be useful. But particularly with securing our external borders, unfortunately, the, we have a lack there that the technology is not used to help people who are in danger at our external borders, but just the opposite, to use the civilian drones to spot where the refugees are and then ask perhaps the guards from Libya to pull them back. So I am opposed to this practice. Any military leader will say that casualties are an inevitable part of warfare. But when you consider the drones were created to avoid unnecessary casualties, then questions need to be asked when that goal is not achieved. And human rights groups will be particularly worried about the increased secrecy around drone wars, especially when you can't hold a robot accountable to international law. This is Bjarke Smith-Meyer for JN1 at the European Parliament in Brussels.